This is a film about men with breasts. Not obese men with fatty breasts, but men who develop genuine breast tissue which can grow to fill a double D cup. There are some men who hate them and want to cut them off, and others who simply want to celebrate them. Some men question if they are boys or girls. Some even produce breast milk. And some simply feel like freaks. Under the shirts of thousands of men lies the hidden world of boys with breasts. Twenty-seven-year-old Tatum Johnston is a gym instructor with a secret. He suffers from gynecomastia, a condition which has caused him to develop breasts. Tatum's breasts look much like a woman's, and their presence under his gym kit is causing him a great deal of embarrassment. Otherwise fit and healthy, Tatum's breasts are a daily reminder of his difference. I'm always like, conscious of it and keep looking down. I have to wear a lot of loose, loose shirts and I think, trying to cover it so nobody don't notice it. But um, there are people at work that know that I got it. You know, they see me trying to sneak into the pool sometimes. And, you know, there's one of the guys at work, you know, which is quite funny, call me Breast Boy. Uh, so, um, yeah, but yeah, he's sort of embarrassed about it. Tatum's swelling breasts first appeared six years ago in his early 20s. As a slim and fit young man, he couldn't understand how this could be happening to him. <laughs> Every time I see a man with breasts, he's normally an overweight man and he's just like big breasts. You know, I've never really seen anybody of my size like, you know, fit and having breasts. Um, so that, that's why the first I was thinking, you know, something is wrong. Tatum's breasts would not go away and he became anxious about their continued development. He went to see his GP, who referred him to a consultant at a South London hospital. The specialist um, was looking at it, was having a little feel around, a little feel. <laughs> it was just quite funny at that time because he was like holding on to it like that and he was like, he wasn't sure. He's holding on and he squeezed down into it, into my chest. And then he, he said, um, no, because I was saying, is it cancer? And he was like, no, it's not cancer. It wasn't that bad because it was so small. You know, you couldn't see anything. It was just, um, if, to feel, you could feel the breast bud. And then the nipple started growing like a teenager's, you know, it's quite pointed and big and round. <clears throat> and um, it was the right one that carried on growing. That's the bud that grew first. Um, and that just grew. And the left one, I think there was a bud there, but it, it wasn't growing. And even now, the right one is bigger than the left. Um, and I was... Over the years it's grown, it took, it took quite a while to grow and I just was sorry for Tate really that, you know, that he would feel embarrassed about all of that. It didn't bother me at all. Gynecomastia is not caused by obesity. The condition refers to glandular tissue surrounded by fat, similar to a woman's breast, and generally results from an imbalance of the hormones oestrogen and testosterone. It is common in puberty, and often boys grow out of it. But for some, like 16-year-old Sam Macbeth, when puberty ends, their breasts remain. I noticed about three years ago, three or four years ago, whilst I was in the shower, and I had sore lumps underneath my chest. And I noticed my chest had got bigger as well. I got bullied a little bit about it, like saying people saying I've got man boobs and things like that. Whenever someone like punched me and we were just mucking about, like if I ever got hit in the chest or something, then it'd be really painful, like a bruising pain. At one time I was playing football on the field and this was by um, an older person and I was running past, I had my shirt unbuttoned slightly and he shouted out that boy's got tits. That hurt quite a lot. My brother's always taking the piss. Well, he used to be firmly trying to grab them. And that was, and then he's always saying, oh, you've got tits and tit boy and stuff like that. 
Sam's family hoped that the condition would just disappear. Unfortunately, Sam is left feeling too self-conscious to ever show his chest. We just thought it was something that had happened. Uh, unfortunately, that Sam had um, developed more of a chest than perhaps another boy, but um, that it was going to eventually go, and that we wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be a problem. Well, it was a problem for now, but it would be gone later on. I went to the doctors to try and find out what it was, and they couldn't find anything wrong with me. And so then he sent me to go see a paediatrician. Sam's consultant prescribed testosterone to try to restore the hormone imbalance which causes his condition. However, in Sam's case, the treatment has not made the hard lumps of breast tissue disappear, and he is now considering risky surgery. I think, basically, he just wants it gone. gone. So he won't think about, probably in depth, about actually the surgery. He'll think about, he'll go into hospital, have something, have some surgery done, and come out without, without any, without a chest or out of... I just feel different to other people, and I don't feel right, and I just want to feel normal. In California, 35-year-old John O'Hara also just wants to be accepted as normal. Like Sam, John's breasts developed when he was quite young, causing him to become extremely self-conscious. Growing up, I think it definitely affected self-esteem and there was a, a layer of shame involved. Years of living with breasts has also deeply affected John's sense of masculinity. When I came out of the water once at the beach, there was a woman and her little boy, and the little boy made a comment, something like, are you, are you a boy or a girl or something? And the, the mother was mortified. And I was beginning to realize, oh, you know, maybe I'm supposed to be covered up and, and there's something different about me. Living in LA, John has a very strong sense of body image and his enlarged breasts are in stark contrast to the muscular chests that many men aspire to. I spent thousands of dollars on a personal trainer. Plus I was doing, you know, cardio things on my own. I was training for the marathon. But every time I lose weight, I realize the change I want with my chest wasn't going to happen. Diet and exercise alone will never get rid of John's breasts, and he is currently deciding whether to have surgery, hoping that the procedure will make him a new man and give him the flat chest he has always desired. Back in Britain, Tatum is frustrated by the continued presence of his breasts. No matter how much he exercises, they simply will not go away, and he's tired of the responses they attract. You know, some people, I saw, I saw some people think it's like, it's my chest. I got a big chest, but it's not. It's actually his breast. No matter how much weight I lift or whatever I do, training I do, I still got that breast hanging. You know, it, it just doesn't go. Tatum's situation is complicated. Seven months ago, he underwent breast reduction surgery for his gynecomastia on the National Health Service. Yeah. The procedure was unsuccessful, and his breasts are back. I was very disappointed with it because it didn't move like in one inch. I should say, not even one bit, he hasn't he haven't gone down. It didn't look any different. I the suppose... left one did. The left one looked a lot, you know, flatter, but um, the right one didn't seem to change at all. Yeah, it does, the just seems to say the same way. I, I, I guess it, it would be like, I didn't expect it to be like swollen up, which that, that's what I think. It was swollen up, but even when they take the bandage off, and look at it, it was like the same size all the way through. Like, Amazing, like they didn't take anything out of it. Tatum and Alison are travelling to a London hospital, where Tatum has a consultation to assess his condition. He is deciding whether to try a second surgery to remove his breasts, but the couple are deeply concerned that it might not be successful. Tatum faces further complications due to his inability to heal without leaving raised scar tissue, a condition which often occurs in Afro-Caribbean skin. 
He does not want to be left with unsightly marks across his chest as a result of this new procedure. You know, when they lift up the nipple, all right, you're going to be left with a scar, two thick scars. Yeah. You see how when they went in at the side, yeah, your scar is like that thick, isn't it? And that was only like a puncture hole, yeah? So if they're going to cut, that's going to be like long and thick, like a big caterpillar. As Tatum prepares to meet with his consultant to discuss the next stage of his treatment, he must decide if the possibility of a failed second surgery and more scarring is preferable to living with his breasts. Twenty-seven-year-old Tatum Johnston has breasts. He first had surgery to remove them seven months ago, but the procedure was unsuccessful. He's now back at Guy's and St. Thomas's Hospital in London to find out if he can have a second operation to flatten his chest. Tatum's consultant, Mr. Hoazjo, performed the first procedure, but the liposuction machine was not strong enough to remove Tatum's persistent gynecomastia. Even this one, even this one has gone bigger now, hasn't it? Yeah. At least this scar that we did was staying relatively small. Yeah, the, the, okay. the, scarring, the scarring is fine. Yeah. I mean, what I, I was I was thinking, he, could he use the same scar yeah, again? If that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So what, this time we're going to the plan is that we've got a better machine now than the one we had previously. Unfortunately, the problem is that we have quite an old machine, so the suction power is not as good. So we arrange a special machine to come in just for you, really. Yeah. And we're going to go through the same to suck out most of the fat. But at the same time, I am going to make a small hole here, okay, on both sides. I keep it as small as I can yeah. to take out some of the glands. I think that would be more helpful this time by doing combination. So we're going to go through the same with this one for a liposuction. But at the same time, what we do is that we're going to make a small scar here yeah. to take out some of the glandular tissues. Okay. Could you not take it all out? Or you just yeah, we're going to take as much out. But you see, the thing is that I try to limit the amount of scar he will have. This has always been the aim yeah. in his case. That's what we've gone through in the first yeah, time. Because right. what we're concerned about is that, um, it, all right, it's the fatty tissue because he, you know, he's putting on weight or yeah. whatever, but it's the glands that keep yeah. growing. No, I would be able to get rid of all the glands if I keep it as small as possible. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because it, one of the problems as well with the breast, it hurts. It hurts sometimes, yeah. you know, I feel like that achy pain in there sometimes, which is like... When it's growing, know, I suppose. And I have to take, I have to take like, um, painkillers. Mm -hmm. They're trying to do us the pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's sore because you've got a lot of gland tissues in there. Yeah. So it does affect by hormonal changes, I mean, and same as women, really. Yeah. yeah. That's what that's what Alison told me. Uh, He's like having a little breast bottom and growing. It does hurt. Yeah, they, they it, 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 yeah, yeah, it yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do feel it. Yeah. Basically, yeah. we've got this machine coming in that I can arrange for sometimes in the early part of March. And just the, the last machine we had wasn't that brilliant, so the power wasn't good enough in sucking it all out, the fat. So we've got this new machine, and then with that extra scar, we're going to get a much better result this time. Yeah. As Tatum worries about the possible outcome of his second operation, in the US, John O'Hara has decided to go ahead with his surgery. It is the day of his procedure to remove his breasts, and he has booked in with top Beverly Hills breast man, Dr. Chesky. Let's put some marks on you and kind of show you what we're going to do. Um, first marks I'm going to put on, I'm just going to kind of detail your anatomy to me because it, as you lie down on the operating room table it will change a little bit. Now during the surgery we often sit you up to see that a little bit but it's much more dramatic and more noticeable if we kind of mark you when you're standing up. Now first thing we're going to do is going to do the liposuction. Okay and do the liposuction we're going to make a little incision just at the bottom of the areola on both sides and a little incision just here in the crease that you've got here and we're going to, we'll inject the fluid that has the medicines in it, the tumescent fluid that allows the blood vessels to constrict and the numbness of the area. 
we're going to really inject all this air all the way down here and all up here and all up here and then we're going to do the liposuction in that area and we do much more than just the area of your chest and breast because the more skin we undermine the more skin tightening we're going to get mm -hmm. after the surgery so we'll get almost up to your clavicles and, and kind of halfway down your abdomen the surgical treatment for gynecomastia mastia has really changed a lot over the past 25, 30 years. And the biggest change in that was the advent of liposuction. Prior to 1980, gynecomastia, if it was treated surgically, was primarily treated with direct uh, excision of the breast tissue and some of the surrounding skin. And actually this was a fairly deforming operation. Sometimes the nipple was removed with the areola and the skin. Often they would get a, a depressed area in the center of uh, the chest around where the area really was from uh, an excision there, and they call this a saucer type deformity. David Dennison developed gynecomastia as a teenager in the 1960s, when corrective surgery for the condition was not as sophisticated as today. Shrouded in taboo, male breasts were little discussed at the time, and David feels that his experience has ruined his life. I remember the first time I was aware of it, and it was in showers, and everybody was staring, and I didn't really know why. And then they told me, and I didn't know what to do. And uh, I remember the PE teacher coming out to see what the commotion was in the showers, and he took one look, well, the kids told him, and he went a bit red-faced to walk to and close the door. I thought I was turning into a girl. I thought. I thought it must have been possible. Although logic said it couldn't happen. I knew what was happening wasn't normal. It scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I wasn't an equal. I was far from an equal. I was a freak. Any friends I did have wouldn't associate with me because they didn't want to be targeted as associating with a freak. So the people at school shunned me and so did my friends. Simple as that. David has been permanently scarred by his experience of gynecomastia and has not discussed it openly until now. So don't you feel like you've overcome at least a lot of it? He has yes. recently confided in his close friend, no, Catherine, really who has helped him come to terms with the emotional fallout. Mm, it's taken you a long time to come to terms with it. Well, you haven't come to terms with it, you have. I'll never come to terms with it. It's like a long time. Don't you think you will? No. No, it, it no, hurts too much. No, it's too much pain involved. Even Unable to live the with the condition, David had surgery to remove his breasts I'm when he was 15. The procedure was brutal and has left him scarred for life. The carried out, I think it was supposed to be a radical mastectomy. But it looks like they changed their mind halfway through and decided to do something else. They did a very, very bad job on me. I really have no idea what they were thinking of when they did it, when they started the operation or when they finished. If an operation can go bad, it went wrong on me. I don't know where he started with his stairs on the left hand side or the right hand side, but they're both totally different operations and they were both done at the same time. On one side, it could have been better, but it's not bad. Although there's an indentation whereby there shouldn't be any indentations. On the other side, it's like he went in a little bit too deep and then thought, oops, better leave that alone. Let's hope it'll, it'll it, we won't take as much out. Let's hope it'll, it'll average out. So consequently, I've still got some breast tissue that shouldn't be there. So now in actual fact, I'm in the same position as what I was, but in reverse. Um, what I mean by that is, I still won't take my clothes. I still, I still won't be seen topless anywhere. I'm still a very conscientious skill to keep myself very covered up. Back in the 1960s, 
surgical procedures for the condition were basic and results often deforming. Only recently, in 1990, I went to see a plastic surgeon and he just apologized for the person who did the operation and said there's nothing he could do. There's, there's, there's not enough there to do anything with. Merle Yost has also undergone surgery for his gynecomastia, and like David Dennison, is not pleased with the results. As a psychotherapist, he specializes in helping men deal with the emotional and psychological effects of living with the condition. I was a typical 10-year-old, and all of a sudden, my body started doing something that apparently wasn't happening to everybody else's body, and it just felt really weird. And of course, I went to my parents, uh, who ultimately didn't turn out to be a lot of help in this particular arena. Uh, but I just felt like I was different, and that that, uh, in some ways, caused me to pull back and withdraw. Merle had breast reduction surgery in his early 30s, but it was only partially successful, and much of the breast tissue has since grown back. 30% of first surgeries, gynecomastia returns, because it's impossible to remove all of the breast cells. I mean, they expand and they're there, and, or they may just be dormant. And so consequently, the conditions in the body are there, it's just going to return to some degree, maybe not to the same degree as in the first time, just as like women who have a breast reduction, often breasts return to basically the same size they were before. Well, the same thing can happen with a man with gynecomastia. Merle set up his website, gynecomastia.org, in 1997 as a resource for men with the condition. There are several different sections to the site reflecting varying attitudes to male breasts. The first and largest list encompasses men who want to have surgery, but other subscribers have an entirely different outlook. The second list was the people who, for one or a reason, decided not to have surgery for religious reasons, for health reasons, for whatever reasons. And then there got to be a battle going on there between the men who really liked their breasts and felt they should be celebrated or enjoyed and the men who just wanted to tolerate them. Back in London, Tatum relaxes during his weekly cricket practice. He's conscious of his breasts when bowling as they cause him discomfort. While he refuses to see his condition as a stigma, he is keen to press ahead with surgery and will be glad when his chest is back to normal. After cricket, as Tatum and Allison get ready to go out for dinner, Tatum frets not only about his surgery, but about what he's going to wear to minimize the appearance of his chest. And what bra are you going to wear? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you taking a mick or something? <laughs> You're not a loser, you know. <laughs> I am. Don't keep pulling the top like that, Tate. You're stretching it out. Yeah. Come on, very sticky. I didn't do sure. It's proper, isn't it? It's what? That's like proper breasts. Yeah, but it doesn't really show. I think because the top is dark, it doesn't show. Turn to the side. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's it's almost hard. as that's almost as big as yours. What are you talking about? <laughs> people ask you about it? Yeah, sometimes people ask me about it. Some people know, some people do notice it, but they haven't said anything. But it's only the one that's brave enough to say something about it that actually do, yeah, do ask the questions. You know? Do you feel embarrassed? Yeah, I do feel it. I feel embarrassed about it, you know? And that's the reason why I, wa I wa wanted to get sorted, because, you know, I so feel embarrassed about it, you know? What are you going to do if it don't work? Well, if it don't work, I won't, have, I won't have another surgery. You know, I think this will be it for me. And if it's too, and if it's too bad, yeah. um, I don't know what I'm going to do, but... Um, Would you ever strap them down? Um, I think in, in some ways, if you're getting too big, then I, I would have to. I'll wear one of my bras. <laughs> I'll get your own. <laughs> In two days' time, Tatum will be going under the knife for what he hopes will be the last time. After six years of sore and enlarged breasts, he is desperate to put gynecomastia behind him. 
It is the morning of Tatum Johnston's surgery to remove his gynecomastia. He has previously had surgery to remove his breasts, but it was unsuccessful, and he hopes this second procedure will give him the flat chest he desires. Because of his Afro-Caribbean skin, Tatum is prone to pronounced scarring, which may leave him with disfiguring marks on his chest. This complicates the procedure, as the surgeon has to take greater care. Is he going to cut under the nipple, or is he just going to do like a little hole and take out the... the uh, well, bone? he's probably cut round it. Right around the oh nipple. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And try take and it off. Yeah, possibly take it off. No, what did he say? Off. I uh, possibly lift it up. He what said he, he said he's gonna cut around it. That's what he said. That's a big, thick scar, Tate. Tatum's surgery involves both liposuction to remove the fat and direct incision of his chest to remove the gland tissue. Alison and her daughter Candice have a two-hour wait while surgery takes place. Meanwhile, in a Los Angeles surgery. John O'Hara is about to go under the knife of Dr. Chesky. OK, we're going to start our liposuction. And I can feel that thick, rubbery gland underneath there. You can see we've got some good fat. He's got a lot of fat in there, nice yellow fat. And you can see very minimal blood. Um, there'll be some more as we get remove kind of the easy fat, that will be a little more thicker uh, stuff, in, which is the breast gland, and it becomes a little more bloody as well, because mm -hmm. it's thicker, more fibrous stuff. So, okay, shut the liposuction machine off. So now we'll start our direct excision of that. So it's a little incision, just in the lower part of the areola. And you can see that's some of our breast gland coming out already. It's white kind of glandular tissue rather than the yellow fatty stuff. And that's pretty well all that's left. We don't have much fat left there, but it's this glandular breast tissue that's there. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll spread that open. And this is our tissue here. And you can see we haven't really removed, this is all our breast glandular tissue. And it goes up to ducts that are below the nipple. Okay, so there's our breast tissue there. Okay, good. And see how it's much flatter now on his chest. And you can see now that little nubbin is gone, and you can see how most of our work is done. And it still has a little bit of extra skin, but very minimal. So we're just going to remove a little bit of this redundant skin so he prevents some of the hanging that we have here. There's the medial side. And laterally. So the good news for John is, because we had such good results with our liposuction and removed a lot of his glandular breast yeah. tissue, mm -hmm. that he really only needs minimal, minimal skin tightening, which is the best, because the less skin tightening we need, the, the, the more, the less scar. And our incision will heal just in that junction there, and it's Already we haven't even finished surgery and it's almost invisible as we're kind of closing things up. Not everyone with gynecomastia wants to have surgery. Some men grow not only to tolerate their breasts, but to feel proud of them. But acceptance can take many years and is often a painful process. When I was a teenager and going through, going through the depression about my gynecomastia, uh, I had many different thoughts going through my head. One part said I needed to become a woman. One part said I needed to have a surgery and have them removed. One part of me wanted to walk into the kitchen, pick up a knife, and cut them off right then and there. Having extremely large breasts initially made life hell for 27-year-old John Phipps. My breasts have really affected me psychologically. Growing up, uh, at first I went through my stage where I thought 
that I was turning into a woman. But soon thereafter, I discovered a, a much darker side psychologically. I began to go into fits of depression that were very deep and started lasting very long. Over time, I noticed that I actually began to have suicidal thoughts. And that probably began by the time I was 16. It was quite unnerving, realizing that not only did I have breasts and that I had large breasts, but that I had larger breasts than most women and that they were still growing. When I found out that I had uh, gynecomastia and I could actually put a name on it, it was a great sense of relief to me. I was able to finally realize that I wasn't some different mutant, some cr thing thrown together, that I actually was a human being, I was a man. And even though that I had breasts larger than most women, that I was still a normal person. Now, John has come not only to accept his breasts, but to celebrate them by wearing bras which he has fitted at his local department store. Right now, uh, from the last time that I was uh, measured, which was about six months ago, I am a 50 double D, which makes me larger than almost than most women. By the time I married my wife, uh, I was fairly confident about, about uh, my breasts. We have talked about uh, here and there about what would happen if I decided to have surgery, and she says that she would prefer not to. It's something that's become a part of our lives. It's a part of our relationship. And, and if it's something that works and that's part of the relationship, then, you know, if it ain't broke, don't, don't, uh, don't fix it. With a sympathetic partner, some men even use their breasts as part of sex play and to gain erotic pleasure from them. In my experience, it's mostly straight men who come to like their breast, and some of them even want them to get bigger, and sometimes their wives want them to get bigger. Uh, there are stories of wives being jealous because their husband's breasts are perkier than theirs. Uh, is that it, it depends upon, uh, it also has a lot to do with their partner. I mean, if their partner accepts this part of their body, brings it into their sex play, or embraces this as being a part of them who they are and doesn't shame them, that makes a huge difference in terms of their own being able to accept it. Tatum is about to part company with his breasts and will undergo aggressive liposuction to remove fat and fibrous tissue. He has previously had a similar procedure, but it was unsuccessful. Today, the same surgeon is about to use a much stronger liposuction machine to try and suck out the remaining tissue. In an effort to minimize scarring, he is accessing the same incision points he used on Tatum's previous surgery. Tatum still has a large amount of gland tissue in his right breast, which even the surgeon's more powerful liposuction machine does not remove. We have used a very good liposuction machine and got most of the fat out, but he's still got quite a volume there. You can just you still feel that there's too, too much tissue in there, which I have to excise because the liposuction is not going to work. The surgeon makes a small incision under Tatum's nipple, through which he will attempt to remove the fibrous tissue. Tatum will not have skin removed to help flatten his chest, as Mr. Hoazjo hopes that the skin will tighten of its own accord without surgical intervention. We could make the whole bigger to make our life easier, but at the end of the day, the whole purpose of doing all these things for him is to minimize the scar, so we make our life a little bit harder. This is cosmetic surgery because at the end of the day, it's not going to do him any harm by having it. But psychologically speaking, he is grossly affected by it. So it's a difficult choice in a way whether, because after you've done this, theoretically, then he can go swimming and happy to take a T-shirt off. Physically, there's nothing wrong with him. It's just something that he feels extremely embarrassing. Tatum's surgery appears to have gone well, 
but it will take around four weeks before the swelling goes down and he is able to see any real improvement and assess whether his breasts are now both the same size. The white tissue is actually called what we call glandular tissues. They're not fat, so the liposuction would not have worked. But by doing the liposuction first, it makes it a little bit easy to come up because then most of the fat will be gone, so you just can't concentrate on it, so you can leave the scar a bit smaller. So we haven't lost anything by doing that. But this would not have come over like a section. As Tatum puts surgery behind him, other men still face extreme anxiety about their breasts. For some, nature has played an even worse trick, men who lactate. developing breasts may not be that uncommon. Much more rare is the associated phenomenon of male lactation, where men actually produce milk from their breasts. LA-based celebrity journalist Ken Baker has an interesting case history. A former professional ice hockey player at the peak of fitness, Ken discovered that he had a terrible secret. I was running a marathon and I just remember the whole time you know, I just felt this soreness, you know, on my nipples. And, and that's actually really common to have that problem uh, just because chafing or whatever you're running. And, uh, but for me, it was a lot worse than, than just the normal uh, sort of irritation. I get to the end of the finish line of this marathon and I'm just like, God, it really hurts. You know, it's like I just wanted to like press him in. It just hurts so bad. And I remember just like sort of lifting up my shirt and like, I just, it was, the, the impulse I had was to relieve the pressure, you know, and I remember pushing, and it was like, actually, like a little bit of white stuff came out, you know, and I'm like, wow, that's bizarre. You know, <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. Ken's lactating nipples weren't his only problem. He was also unable to get an erection. He kept his problem secret for over 10 years. You know, you don't walk around talking about, like, how, you know, you can't get an erection or, you know, like you got weird stuff going on with your nipples. You know, it's like, you don't talk about that. You know, you're a dude. Finally, when I was 27, I did start talking about it with a, a girlfriend and she's the one who pushed me to finally get help. Ken was referred to leading hormone specialist, Professor Brownstein at Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles and was diagnosed with a pituitary tumor. Mr. Baker presented primarily because of uh, deficiency in his libido or sex drive uh, and difficulties in sexual functioning. Uh, and uh, those are primary symptoms of a prolactin secreting pituitary tumor. Ken's tumor was secreting prolactin, the hormone which is responsible for producing breast milk in women. Now a normal man has a little bit of prolactin in his body. It's not known why, but it's just like a little bit. And it's uh, uh, maybe about 10, 10 to 20 uh, is normal for a man. When I walked into the doctor the day that I got diagnosed with uh, my tumor, I had a level of 1,600. Um, you know, it's over 150 times the normal level that a guy should have, I had. Brownstein carried out extensive tests and prescribed hormone treatment to try to reduce the life-threatening tumor and control the prolactin secretion. I had to get surgery. The drugs didn't, uh, didn't shrink it, and the drugs didn't uh, actually stop it from growing either, so I needed to get surgery. And so despite Dr. Bronstein's best efforts, I had to go under the knife. Ken underwent a complicated procedure to shell out the pituitary tumor, which not only saved his life, but also stopped the lactation. It immediately brought me great health and vigor and energy and normalcy in my life for the first time. And all I have to do is take uh, one or two pills a week to keep it from growing back. There's just a little shred left. So for me, it's a daily reminder of how lucky I am and just how fragile our bodies are. And I'm just a lucky man. While lactation due to a diseased pituitary gland is clearly accepted, less widely discussed are men who actually attempt to induce their own breast milk production.
men have all exactly the same wiring as women do in the chest, and have the, the milk ducts are there, the, all the, the pieces are in place with sufficient uh, uh, stimulation of, of the uh, cells with estrogen, there's no reason that they shouldn't be able to. There are, are allegedly historical reports of, of men nursing their children when the mothers weren't available. David and Laura Shanley from Boulder, Colorado, claim that David began to produce milk when their first child, John, was born. 25 years ago, I had just had a baby and I had some trouble nursing. And so I got a book called The Tender Gift, Breastfeeding by Dana Raphael, which helped me to understand more the psychological reasons why women sometimes have trouble nursing. I came across a passage in that book that said that men were capable of producing milk. So David and I were intrigued by the idea, and David decided he wanted to try to lactate just to see if he could do it. I was intrigued by this woman. She was a medical doctor and she had done this research and said that this was possible. So I was kind of just intrigued. Could this be real? Although David drew the line at actually feeding his child, he claims the fact that he had gynecomastia combined with his own desire to produce breast milk made him lactate. Probably about two weeks it took. When I was reading, I just looked down and I was all wet here. And it was, milk was flowing out. This went on for maybe a week or two, and Laura's dad is a doctor. He examined me and he gave it the you know, scientific name, gynecomastia. Although there is no scientific evidence to support the Shanley's story, Laura claims that male lactation is much more widespread than it might first appear. There is a gay couple that I know of that adopted a baby and were able to produce milk. One of the men used a breast pump and was able to produce milk. I would rather see a man who really wants to do it, I'd rather see him breastfeed the baby than, uh, than give the baby a bottle. While male lactation like David Shanley's remains highly contentious, Scientists agree that it is possible for some men with gynecomastia to produce milk. Lactation is not generally associated with gynecomastia, but in order to have lactation in the male breast, you must have development of the breast glandular tissue. So you must have some degree of gynecomastia for lactation to occur. It is now two months since John O'Hara's surgery to remove his breasts. He is still wearing a compression vest to help reduce swelling, and it may be up to six months before he sees the final result. Well, eight weeks after surgery, um, there's still swelling. There's uh, sc some scars that will fade where the stitching was, and um, you can see where my chest used to hang over from the gynecomastia, where these lines are. and. Um, as I said, the swelling will be going down um, a lot, hopefully, in the next month or two, and then slowly more through the next six months to a year. John is only now coming to terms with his altered body shape. I'm willing these days to go around in a T-shirt, <laughs> which I did very hesitantly before the surgery. I haven't yet put gynecomastia behind me with uh, swelling still present and healing not completed and possibly a surgery in the future. And also I'm realizing that it's gonna take a while mentally to realize I don't look like I used to look. The worst thing about gynecomastia is the image you create in your own mind about your worth and who you are and that you're not like everyone else. For men who have lived with gynecomastia most of their lives, a period of adjustment is required to come to terms with surgery and the loss of their breasts. For those who develop breasts in adolescence, the process of coming to terms with corrective surgery is much quicker. Sam Macbeth is now 17 years old and has recently undergone his breast removal surgery. 
Despite complications during the procedure when he developed a blood clot in his chest, Sam has made a remarkable recovery. I had my chest surgery on the 16th of September and I had liposuction and I had an incision around my nipple as well and I think they took out breast tissue through there. Incision, they gave me a cut under there. There's still a bit of scar tissue on that one and they did an incision down there. And there's two drain holes on the side where I had tubes going into me to drain off everything that was inside. He's definitely, uh, he's definitely a lot more self-confident and uh, he's, he's not so aware of... Uh, I mean, when we used to go on holiday, he, he, he rarely used to take his top off, you know, on the beach. He'd always keep a T-shirt on because he was very conscious of it. Um, but now, it doesn't seem to bother him at all. And you can see it's... it's it's, you know, his chest looks quite natural now. I was a little bit nervous, but when I was in there, it was fine. And I was just looking forward to having it done and getting it over with. Now, I just feel totally different. I feel like a normal person. Was he pleased with it? It is five weeks since Tatum's breast so reduction procedure. And he has just had a follow-up consultation with his surgeon. Said there's still fluid in the breast. All right. Um, so, Let's have a look. So he said I should... I should still wear the compression. Just straighten your back up a minute. Let me see. That's really good, you know. Look, isn't it? Yeah, no, I'm pushing Sorry. it too much. Sorry. I can feel that. Yeah. That's really good. So I, I thought that scar would have been a lot bigger the second time around. But I'm pleased with it, you know. Um, I think it's a good good result and I could live with it the way it is at yeah. the moment. Um, yeah. You know, and when I, got, when I went back to work and stuff, I wear my shirt, you know, people saying, you know, yeah, I could see the, I could see that they're flatter. You know, so, yeah, I feel good oh, it's about good. it. It's good. Pleased. Before it's a dent in my confidence, you know, mm. not wearing tight tops or not even want to go into the pool, you know, especially when people is in the pool swimming, you know, so they could see my breasts and I was always conscious of it. I can't live with it the way it is now. So yeah, um, yeah, I feel good about it. I would say that anybody who got the problem, you don't have to live with it, you know, you can do something about it. With his chest flatter, and his breasts now the same size, Tatum is relieved that he can now get on with his life, free from the stigma of gynecomastia. But not all men who suffer from the condition are as fortunate. It's not mentioned, it's still a taboo the same as it was in 1966. It's the one of those words which people know about but nobody knows what it is, what it really means, how it affects people. There's a blindness there, the same as what there was when I was at school, it'll be happening today. There's people out there, 14 or younger, and they're going through the same hell now. And parents won't understand, school won't understand, only those people with it, and they need help. Mm -hmm.